please. Get that nigga Dan Prescott up out of here, please. He ain't doing nothing. Get that Detroit shit. You feel me? Rep the D. You understand? Hey. Cowboys ain't doing nothing. They don't get rid of that. And they gotta get rid of Jerry Jones. Hey, yeah, I agree with that one. Question for you. Give How many fourth downs does it take to beat the Cowboys? Whoa! <laughs> 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 and we're, we're walking away quickly on that. <laughs> well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. It is finally freaking Friday, and the weekend is here. We have already started week number six in the NFL. San Francisco 49ers outlasting, oh man, the Seattle Seahawks. You know what's amazing here? I, I have to say, this is so amazing. I have to remember my own things, okay? A couple things that are really important to understand is, I always say, you don't really know what teams are until you get into October. And we're just beginning October, so now we're beginning to see where there were some teams that looked really, really good early on, like the Seattle Seahawks that started out 3-0 and and now have lost three in a row. We looked at New Orleans that literally came to our house, roundhouse kicked us in the teeth, and knocked us the F out, that are now going to be starting a rookie quarterback. We've seen teams that looked like roadkill the first two weeks in the Baltimore Ravens all of a sudden turn it around and look great. So I'm going to say, why isn't that the Cowboys can't be one of those teams that have kind of turned a corner? That maybe they're better than what they were against New Orleans and against Baltimore. Time will tell. What I do know is this, is... Um, the funny thing, there's a whole cycle. My man, Leo, will, will, will repeat it in verbatim. We lose in the playoffs. Like we're the only team that loses in the playoffs that 31 other teams don't have the same problems and issues that the Cowboys have, but we lose in the playoffs. We get vilified by the media. Free agency starts. The Cowboys do nothing. We get vilified in the media and they tell us, we don't care about winning. They've done nothing to get better. We get trashed because then in the draft, they go through and they say, eh, it's a C plus B minus draft. They didn't do anything to really help themselves. We get trashed, we get trashed. And then <clears throat> by the end of training camp, all of a sudden they start after saying that we are worthless, that we suck, we didn't do anything to help ourselves. By the end of training camp, they're saying, well, they're Super Bowl contender. I don't understand how they get it there. I don't understand how they get it there, but that's the cycle that goes on. And what always happens is Mike McCarthy just fell off the salad truck. He sucks. The Cowboys suck. They ha they lose a game that looks really bad, like last year was the Cardinals, and it's the hot seat for Mike McCarthy. And then somehow the Cowboys win 12 games. They pivot and they make a turn. And they make the talking heads look like fools that are constantly picking against them. It's funny because when the Cowboys then beat you, then that team was any good. No, man, they were bums. They were tomato can. We literally were comparing Justin Fields in the same conversation with Pat Mahomes before the Cowboys played him. That's a fact. They literally had Pat Mahomes statistics, not his touchdown passes, though, and Justin Fields, and they're saying he's playing an elite level. They talked about that defense of theirs that was incredible until they played the Cowboys. And then they're, they're, they're frauds. They're frauds. They're nobodies. And it wasn't about the Cowboys doing stuff. They did move the ball up and down the field. There were some mistakes by Dak Prescott and things that kept the game close. But the Cowboys were battered and bruised. We were injured. We were beat the F up. And they gave us no chance. 
And this feels like a deja vu weekend, which I always like when they never pick the Cowboys. It seems like every time they pick the Cowboys is when we fail. Going through. Now, this game is big. The Cowboys have won the last five against the Lions, scoring 147 points to 91 given up. The Lions are a little pissed off, I'm sure. Injury-wise, Micah Parsons is working with rehab on the sidelines. He didn't practice and um, probably won't play. But you have to look at his season thus far has not been really great. He's got one sack, two tackles for loss, 14 tackles, uh, zero interceptions, one pass defense, and a lot of um, pressures. But for Micah Parsons, that's not a good year. Uh, Linebacker Nick Vogel um, did not practice um, foot injury. He's played in three games. Zach Martin got a rest day. Martez Lafufu, um, full participant in practice, has a quad injury. Eric Kendricks, calf injury, did not practice. Uh, He's got two sacks, two tackles for loss, 52 tackles. He's having actually a really good uh, season, one interception. Tyler Guyton was a full participant in practice with his knee and groin. Diggs, um, full participant in practice with an ankle injury. Celan Carson, full participant, which is great, with his shoulder. Deron Bland, full participant, which is another great thing. Um, And that's one of the things that's been missing from us is getting that playmaker. And Martez Bell was illness, did not practice. So that's where we are. We're still beat up, battered, and bruised. Um, Tyler Guyton, you know, as Jerry said, has a chance to play uh, this weekend. But I'm kind of on the the fence where I think I would rather see Tyler Smith at tackle. Now, Lions, they're kind of pissed off about, of course, that call that was made at the end of the game where they were trying to be a little deceptive. And they kind of got caught in it. And so Lions are looking for payback. And, you know, the Lions, of course, everybody's got them as a Super Bowl favorite. Um, that literally they're telling you that every team that the Lions has faced uh, the next week, they have um, lost. And let's look at the Lions, who, who they've played, to see who we're talking about here. So... <clears throat> um, they beat the Rams, and the Rams, okay. All right, so the Rams have, what, one win? Okay, so they're okay. They lost to Tampa Bay, all right, so that doesn't count. They beat the Cardinals, but the Cardinals not a good team. Okay. And they beat uh, the Seahawks. Seahawks playing against the 49ers. I don't know that this is where the reason that the team's lost, every team that they beat, the Rams aren't a good team. They got one win. The Cardinals, although they did beat San Francisco, um, they're not a great team. And the Seahawks are on a three-game lose streak. So I don't know that that one really holds water. But what's been lost in that game is, you know, it's funny. I don't hear too many people talking about this too much with my quarterback, Dak Prescott. But now third down and 13, blitz coming. Prescott able to get out of the end zone and now airs it out for Lamb. He's got it. He's gone. When he gets there, it's a touchdown, Cowboys. I don't remember them talking too much about that. But that's um, my quarterback. And the reality is, is for the Cowboys, part of the reason why they've been in the position that they've been in the last couple of years is because of that guy. The Cowboys were missing all the were missing playmakers across the board. You lost Brandon Cooks. You lost Micah Parsons. You lost D-Law. You lost your starting left tackle. You were battered and bruised, and somehow they make a play, and they get a win. So hopefully the Cowboys find a way. Um, I think that it's going to be uh, it's going to be a tough fought game, and I'm going to definitely take the Cowboys plus three. I'm always going to take the Cowboys because I bet with my heart and not my head. But I think the Cowboys got a chance on this one. The Cowboys playing at home. I think that they're going to finally get the stuff together, and I think that they recognize 
how important this game is. This game, if you find a way to win it, can set you up for the rest of the season. If you lose it, it's not the end of uh, days by any stretch of the imagination going into the bye week, but I think you would rather go through and get a win. Let's listen to the good people from ESPN that are going to literally tell us how bad we are. If, if someone said the Cowboys are legit Super Bowl contenders if they beat the Lions, would that be fact or fiction? If they beat the Lions, then okay, but it's <laughs> not okay. Yeah, let, let, let's keep it real, man. Like this, this is a bad matchup. Like last week, we understood that it was great that they showed some grit, some toughness against the Pittsburgh Steelers. But this is a different animal, different beast, man. You know, you talk about, you know, this could be a repeat of Green Bay coming in town. They could run the ball all over. They're going to miss Demarcus Lawrence and Michael Parsons. Because this is going to be a brawl. And, and Dan Campbell makes it a, a physical contest. And they, don't, they just don't have the soldiers to, to be able to hold it. Not to mention they have the, the residual, the leftover bad feelings of the way they lost that game last year with yeah. that. Really bad call, the missed call with the, with yeah, the yeah. reporting. Oh, is Skipper, eligible. Skipper going to get some good back. The Lions oh, are Skipper still get annoyed some good about back. that game. They felt like, and it worked out for them, obviously, with the playoff seating and whatnot. But, like, they, yeah, that, that's something that the coaching staff is using this week. Like, that was taken away from us. It, it should have actually wound up working against them last year. The yeah, way yeah. the matchups played out, it wound up working in their favor. But it didn't seem like it was going to. The Cowboys, again, have lost three straight home games. Here is Dak Prescott talking about trying to win that streak. There's no way at home we can drop, uh, drop another home game. So I um, want the Dallas fans to come in expecting to win, bring everything that they can, all the positive energy and vibes, and we've got to produce and go get it. We're going on a bye. So um, <laughs> we're going to get this win and go enjoy the bye and then figure it out after that. Right. So how this does win. this game set up to you? Ryan, what are you looking at? Are you eye chart? Yeah. No, I'm looking at Derrick Henry. Aaron Jones and yeah. Alvin Kamara still Ooh. running in Dallas <laughs> right now. Like, that, that, that's what I'm looking at. You mentioned those last three games that they've lost. Yeah. You know how people say they ran you out the stadium? No, teams have literally run them out of the stadium. Mm -hmm. Running backs have absolutely gone off. The physicality of these offenses has dominated the Dallas Cowboys defense. Do you know who's physical, physical? Yeah, the the Lions. Detroit Lions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you know who said, hey, we're going to run David Montgomery out there and we're going to pound you. We're going to come downhill. We're going to create dynamic run plays. Oh, by the way, we got one faster in Jameer Gibbs and we're going to put him in the game not just because we're spelling him, because we have a duo of running backs that are both Pro Bowl caliber. We have a coach in Dan Campbell, a coach in Ben Johnson who doesn't care, who don't care how pretty it is. They want to win football games. They want to bloody your nose. And the four teams that have played the Detroit Lions this year have all lost the, la the next week. Mm -hmm. Every single one of them have gone on the next week in games they should have won and got their face beat in because they are physically worn down from the week before. And you're going to bring the Dallas Cowboys in there that don't want a fist fight? Against a team who feels like you stole something from them last year, who more than anything wants to continue proving that the way their coach treats them, the way their coach approaches coaching is the right way to do it. Yeah. This is a bad matchup. This is Holloway Volkanovsky. This is Vernon Forrest, <laughs> Shane Mosley. This is one of those Thank times you. you walk into the ring or you walk into the octagon and you might think you're good and then do punch in the face and you change your career. Hmm. I, I go back to Mike Tyson and Michael Spinks. I think yeah. that is that, that, that was <laughs> that might be the worst matchup of all time. I, that was four, the four, four, four. So no one could be crazy enough <laughs> to pick the Cowboys in this game. Man, come on! I, I see it totally oh, different, Lord, and God, here's Mike. why. Aiden, Aiden Hutchinson, yeah, write write this down. Aiden Hutchinson accounts Aiden. for fifty percent of their sacks. So Mike McCarthy is going to go in there with a TJ Watt game plan, four hands on him the whole time. Dak Prescott eats up man-to-man -man defense. Do I think Detroit's going to score? Absolutely. I think this is a high-scoring game, and I think the way Dak Prescott is playing, he's the difference in this game. And the other thing is, we did see what Mike Zimmer wanted to do last week. He brought the linebackers, because right now, yeah. we know there's no pressure from their defensive line. Mm. So look for them to be a little bit more aggressive on defense. They're going to get Deron Bland back, who I think is a really good corner. Mm -hmm. he is. And I think this guy right here, number four, Dak Prescott's the difference in the game. How, how good is Deron Bland in tackle? If that's what he's going to do, he's going to put his big boy pass on. They ain't going to throw the ball. They don't have to. You talk about being like, yo, full circle. 
I bet you they start with the skipper package. They go yeah. right in like with the skipper package to make a point. Way. Here I go. Okay. Uh-huh. We got jokes. Right He's the player who reported as eligible yeah. last year, and they wound up calling it off, and um, they wound up losing that game at the very end, and they were frustrated New Year's Eve or right around that time yeah. sometime last year. So, so uh, we all, well, except for Tannenbaum, we all agree that the Lions have the overwhelming edge in this yeah. matchup. So tell me how they win this game. <laughs> Let, let's, let's make it fun. Yeah. If we're sitting here Monday morning in a state of absolute shock that the Cowboys uh, have won, shock. how will it I'm, I'm going to say something that might be sacrilegious. They're actually a better run defending team without Michael Parsons. Interesting. They're, they're a team I think that I inverted said that. the line of scrimmage last week against the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're a team that Eric Kendricks played well going downhill because he was kept clean. Mm-hmm. And also, you looked at, and, and I think Dan, oh, Coach Mike T mentioned this, they brought linebackers, but they run blitzes on mm-hmm. early first and second downs. That's the sort of team mm-hmm. they have to be defensively. And Dak Prescott, like I said last week, and he threw the two interceptions, so we didn't get that MVP level play. That's how Dak Prescott has to play. Dak Prescott has to make sure that Jalen Tolbert becomes a part of this game. You that Tolbert becomes Jaylen a part Tolbert. of this game. But C.D. Lamb needs to have a C.D. Lamb-like importance or, or, or impact on this game as well. That's the only way they win. They win by playing the best ball the Dallas Cowboys have played all season. Which is how they won uh, on uh, New Year's Eve or whatever it was last year. Plus, they got a break yeah. at the end, obviously. But, like, to me, the Cowboys are very happy – with the way they defended the run last week against the Steelers yeah. and, and the week before mm-hmm. against the Giants. The Lions, this is not the Steelers and Giants run right. game. This is very, very different. But, and, and also, the Lions have more of a threat in the passing. Like, you, can't, you could sell out to stop the run against the Pittsburgh Steelers well, right now. Pass. Right? Laporta so, should eat. They should be mm-hmm. fine. I, like, I just think it's, it sets up badly for If Dallas wins this game, it will be because they have shown themselves – to be a tougher team than we give them credit for being. Agreed. And there's that's a, what you'll be saying on Monday morning. There, there's another narrative to this game, which is Dallas can score, and that's how you yes. get a team out of running the ball. When they have a sense of urgency, yeah. if they got a you're match, not get, you're score. not getting the you Lions out of running the ball. A lot I mean, to get the I mean, Lions out of running the ball. To, to do that. <laughs> the Lions not to mention the run. fact that Jared Goff then would play actions you to death, right? Yeah. And the yeah. last when last seen, he was 18 out of 18 yeah. in a game. Look, yeah. Mike T, I love you. I think you're out of your mind. All right. Mm-hmm. Lose to Cleveland, then they absolutely stink. Yeah, lose to Cleveland and you absolutely stink. Yeah, that will be interesting. We'll talk about the Eagles later on. So, you know, I think the wild card here is the Cowboys actually getting back some of their defensive backfield. Um, The front of that defense played so much better. Again, without Micah Parsons. I think I kind of said that going into this stretch, that you're pay, playing teams that run the ball really well. Micah Parsons, the best way to have Micah Parsons is you have a lead and teams become one-dimensional. When that happens, then Micah Parsons is an absolute positive beast. But when you get into games where you are basically getting pounded on, it, you, can, you can run right at Micah Parsons. He just doesn't have the physicality, the size, the weight, the mass to be able to take that on on a consistent basis. The Cowboys changing up that defensive front did um, great work last week against the Steelers. Now, again, the Steelers did have uh, their two tackles out, but we basically are having guys that are playing more time than they've ever played. Um, if the Cowboys can get that physicality, you know, from Jordan Phillips, from Mozzie and things in the middle, and then getting back uh, Deron Bland, who has been our pick magnet, you could end up slowing down that offense. Now, the Cowboys, we're going to have to score it well. We can't have any turnovers and things. But, you know, they've already preordained that the Lions are going to come in, kick our teeth in, and keep on rolling right on over us. So, I believe the Cowboys have a chance. Because as they're going through and pointing out how the Cowboys were steamrolled those games early on, it's a lot different when you start looking at some of these teams now that we're steamrolling others that now are struggling. Already good people, it's Friday. Let me say um, from the bottom of my heart, thank everybody yesterday for all of the birthday wishes and things. Uh, there's too many of you to even be able to thank, but I appreciate that. Thank you for reminding me that I'm old as dirt. As always, we will see you guys real soon. And... Um, Peace. Scott just got another weapon to throw this game. CD Lamb is a weapon in every shape of the world. I fire Howie. Fucking fire him. Motherfucker!
stupid motherfucker! What an idiot! What an idiot! Dallas has Amore Cooper and Gallup, but we don't need a receiver! Are you kidding me? I don't want Justin Jefferson, he's ass! He's stupid! I fire his ass! I fire his ass! I mean, how he's gotta be stupid! What are you doing? You just let Dallas take him!